Psalms 150, the Bible says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Are you breathing? If you're breathing, then you should be praising the Lord. Everything that hath breath should praise the Lord. Do you know why these people wrote literally hundreds to scores of songs? It's not because just for the songwriter or for the preacher or for the choir. It's for every one of you, everyone that has breath, to praise the Lord and to give Him the glory. Today my title is Greatest Hits in Music. Greatest Hits in Music. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I'm going to give some of the greatest stories that I've read concerning your songs. I pray that these stories, that this preaching, will motivate, change people's lives, get them to praise you no matter what. No matter how heavy the flesh is or how heavy the trial is, no matter if we are not in the mood, that these songs will bring real meaning to our hearts and that these songs during our darkest hours can bring glory to your name. Heavenly Father, wash away my sins with your blood. I need behind the cross. I need you, Lord. I need you to guide every tongue that I, every word that comes out of my tongue. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Alright, my first point, because of deliverance. Because of deliverance. That's why we sing praises to the Lord. Please look at Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Now, do you know why in the Bible people sang praises to the Lord? Because of deliverance. Because God delivered them from trouble. God delivered their souls. God saved their life. God became their Lord and Savior. Now, are you saved? If you are saved, then you got something to sing about. You got something to shout about. You got something to lift up your voice to God about. You got something to praise to Him about. You know why? Because you are saved. That's why. I mean, it is a crying shame that all, that all you do is sing something that you listen to some worldly garbage on the radio, but you can't sing one song out of a hymn book Ooh, amen. when you are a saved Christian. Oh, goodness. Look at Luke chapter 1, verse 46. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. 47. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. If you read from verse 46 all the way down to 56, all of that was purely singing praise to God Almighty. There was a man named Alfred Ackley, and Alfred Ackley, he had an evangelistic meeting going on, and, you know, souls getting saved, people getting right with God. But then there was a lost Jew, an unsaved Jew, that, a pope, that approached Ackley, and this Jew scoffed at him. And no matter what these people do and no matter what these people do to serve God and worship God and give glory to Him, He doesn't find meaning in that and He scoffed it. He said, why should I worship a dead Jew? Meaning Jesus Christ. Why should I worship Him? Because Jesus is dead. Alfred Ackley, do you know how he answered him? He wrote this song. I serve a risen Savior, He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy, I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. Hey, He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. To that Jew, do you know how? He lives within my heart. Jesus. Now, do you know why he wrote those words? Amen. Now, do you know why? Mm -hmm. Because he is sick and tired of seeing people saying that Jesus is dead, Christianity is dead, and we got a born dead, and Come that on. we're just singing praises because it's some sort of Preach. dead tradition. Come on. Come on. 
No, he's saying right here that it's a living praise to Jesus Christ. And that's why he wrote that song, that Jesus Christ lives. When you sing these hymns, does he live in your heart? Is, do you live a resurrected Ooh. Christian life? Does he live? Yes, he lives. That's why we sing praises in San Jose by that. That's why we sing the song, He Lives. Amen, amen, amen. There was once a young man who was depressed, and perhaps he was getting down into drugs and trying to go through anything of the world to find meaning in life, to fill in the emptiness and void. Mm. But he couldn't take it anymore. He was so depressed and suicidal, and he was upset with life. And then uh, he was walking down throughout the town, and he was like saying, I can't take it anymore. No meaning, no joy. And he said, I'm just going to end my life. So he found a bridge, and then he decided to, I'm going to walk over there by the bridge, at the edge of the bridge. And I got a gun in my pocket. I'm going to take out that gun at the edge of the bridge and shoot my brains out. I'm going to fall and just end my life like that. So just when he arrived at the bridge, he happened to pass by a church. And this church unknowingly, they were just singing these songs just the usual, just singing hymns to Jesus Christ. And while he was passing by that church, that suicidal, depressed man heard the song, The cross upon which Jesus died is a shelter in which we can hide. And its grace so free is sufficient for me. And deep is its fountain, as wide as the sea. And he heard that chorus. There's room at the cross for you. For me? There's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. I'll tell you what, a lot of deadbeat Christians who are singing this song today, they, this song may not have meant anything to them, right. but I'll tell you what this individual did, Amen. this suicidal, depressed man did. When he heard that song, he threw the gun all the way to the river, and he says, I'm going to get saved. And he Amen. received Praise Christ God. for his salvation. Right. Do you know why we sing these hymns? Because of deliverance. Amen. Because it saved my life. It saved yeah. your life. Do you know why Alfred Ackley sang that song, He Lives? Because Jesus Christ is a living Savior. That saved his life. On, and saved his soul from hell. Come and on. you can imagine Ackley was telling that yeah. too. Hey, you can get saved too. Amen. You can be delivered Jesus too. Right. Do you know why we sing these songs? Do you think that they just wrote it here spontaneously? Yeah. Just like a random evolution. That something just popped out of their brain. And they mutated and they just wrote it like this. That they were just... Possess demons that they were just speaking in tongues and possessed by some spirit and just wrote it down like some kind of inspiration. No, what they did was because the Holy Spirit spoke upon their heart because they found real meaning. There was a story behind it and they wrote it down preacher. so that you and I can learn something. Come on, preacher. That's right. Not because it's some deadbeat, no. sacred, monastery Catholic thing. Actually, yeah. It's because it's real. Amen. And that's why we sing it. Come on. And whether you sing this with a choir yep. or you sing this with two people, it don't matter. Amen. It gives glory to that's God. Right. That's right. It gives glory to Him. Good preaching, preacher. There was a little Welsh community. In this Welsh community, there was a fierce storm going on. And in this fierce storm, the Welsh villagers, they saw a ship that was about to hit the rocks. And then they said, man, that ship's going to fall. The people are going to die there. And they saw a poor fellow clinging on a spat. And the people knew that, man, he's going to die. He's going to die. And he was clinging on to dear life, and he was going to die helplessly. So there was a minister that took a horn, and through this horn, he yelled out to that poor fellow who was going to die in the storm, Look to Jesus, can you hear? Look to Jesus, can you hear? Amen. And out of that thunderous voice, they heard a cry saying, aye, aye, sir. So that man recognized, I need my deliverer, Jesus. And when that ship crashed and he was about to lose his life, he didn't die a poor, lost life soul. The Lord delivered him. He knew where he was going after he died. That's why when, he was a, when the ship crashed and he fell to the sea, he sang to his deliverer, 
Jesus, lover of my soul, let me to thy bosom fly. And when the waves crashed above him, he sang, While the nearer waters roll, while the tempest still is high. And as he crashed in the ocean, he sang, Hide me, O oh my Savior, hide till the storm of life is past. Safe into the haven guide. Oh, and you can imagine heaven opening up. Amen. Oh, receive my soul at last. Do you know why he sang that song now? Do you know why that song was in there? Now, do you know why? I'll tell you why. Because there was a real meaning behind it. Mm -hmm. And when you pick up this hymn, I hope that you're imagining your story wow. when you're reading the verse and imagining what kind of situation you're going through wow. and picturing yourself and saying, is that me? Amen. And perhaps you'll sing a little better after yeah. that with all your heart rather than being a deadbeat Christian and saying, this is just a usual tradition. Yeah. Amen. Ooh. Amen. Maybe then you can give your heart to Jesus Christ and say, there is a real meaning yes. behind it. Do you know why I sing? Do you know why I shout? Do you know why there are times that I would even run around the room? <coughs> because there is a real meaning behind it. All right. You know, the Titanic, some of you have probably heard the story of the Titanic. The Titanic, humongous ship. And these people, they were just ignorant and proud. They thought that, well, you know, I can survive in this ship. Uh, this ship is unsinkable, practically unsinkable. But you know what happened? The Lord just used a little bit of nature. A little bit of the iceberg just went creep like that. And down went the Titanic. When the Titanic was sinking, they did not have enough lifeboats for everyone. Because they automatically assumed, well, the Titanic is unsinkable. It just shows that the greatest efforts of man is just folly with a little Amen. tip of God's creation. Amen. Just that little tip of the iceberg just killed the whole thing. So they did not have enough lifeboats to save everyone. So these people, they gathered around together, and then they were giving out life jackets, and they did not even have enough life jackets for everyone. So then they were about to gather together, and while the Titanic was sinking and sinking and sinking, they made their, they did their last thoughts, prepared themselves for death, and then one instrument player started to get up, and then he gathered other violin players and instrument players, and then he started to play a tune. Nearer, my God, to Thee, nearer to Thee, e'en though it be a cross that raiseth me, playing that song, Nearer My God to Thee, Nearer My God to Thee, down went the Titanic. And then people screaming and then losing their lives and freezing to death in the ocean. Some people hitting against the edges of the ship. And people dying. And then it went that song, Nearer My God to Thee, Nearer My God to Thee. Bring me near, O oh God! Bring me near, O oh God! And then when one lost soul was about to drown to death, in came one Christian swimming over to that lost soul. And then he would, and then that every lost sinner heard that Christian swimming, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And then hear the instrument players going, Nearer, my God, to thee. And then the preacher preaching out, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And then he went to that one lost sinner, 
and he gave him his life jacket, and that Christian said, hey, 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 man, I'm ready to go. I know where I'm going after I die. You're not. Here's my life jacket. Let me tell you something, friend. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. I ain't going to stick around here. There are too many lost souls out there. So then he went around swimming to every lost soul, and he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And you can imagine that music going... Nearer, my God, to Thee. Nearer, my God, to Thee. And then him shouting out, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And as he sunk down to the depths of his death, you can hear him saying, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. and thou shalt be saved. You know what happened to that lost soul when he got his life jacket on? He believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and yet he got saved. That's what happened. And he told that story to everyone after his life was saved from the Titanic. You know why he was able to? You know why that song was sung? You know why that testimony can be foretold? Because it delivered his soul. Amen. Wow. Do you know why we have these songs out now? Do you understand why? They have real meaning. That's right. It delivered my soul, my life, from the mess and the wickedness oh, of this goodness. world. Amen. That's oh, why I say, lift up my voice to him. Please turn to Acts 16. Acts chapter 16. Acts 16. My second point is because of depression. Because of depression. Do you know why I sing and give Him the glory with all my heart? Because when there are times when I'm depressed, I don't take a bottle and go to some bar, on, listen to some come blues on. and jazz right. music. That's just going to build up my depression Preach even it, more. Come on. Preach it. And then I just drink down alcohol, which is going to bring up my depression even more. Amen. Come on. Do you know what I do? I don't sing the song, the blues, the blues, the blues. No, no, no. Do you know what I do? I sing a hymn hey, when I'm depressed. Yeah. Do you know why we have these songs? Like, tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Are you weary? Are you heavy? Are you? Do you know why we write songs like this? I'll tell you why. Because when you're going through darkest hours yeah. and you're depressed, that's why amen. you sing to amen. him. Amen. And trust amen. me, it feels a little better. If you're not completely better, at least it makes you a little bit better. Amen. You know what I do after a hard day of work and I'm tired and bored and now I have to go study garbage in college after work is over? You know what I do? Roll down all the windows, turn out some Bible Baptist rock Come and blow out music, amen. singing and shouting, and I, go, and I say, God is good, praise amen. the Lord, and I sing to the Lord Jesus Amen and Christ. amen to that. You know why I sing? Because of when I'm depressed. That's right. I sing it. Because of depression. Uh, if you look at Acts chapter 16, go to verse 23. 23. Acts 16, verse 23. And when they had laid, laid many stripes upon them, speaking of Paul and Silas, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stock. And what did they do? They drank liquor. They, they, they sang the blues. Nope. <laughs> Verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto wow. God, and the prisoners heard them. Wow. Do you know why we sing every Sunday morning? Because some of us get depressed oh, with the weariness of this world, yeah, and when before you get the preaching hell out of you, you at least uplift and motivate yourself when that's you right, sing. And if you got four me. songs to sing, I think that's enough to lift up your spirit. Come and on, if it's not right. enough, then maybe we should have a whole hour of singing. Yes, Amen. sir. Amen. 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 Good preaching. Now, there was a man named Horatio G. Spafford, and Horatio G. Spafford, he was a minister getting involved with God's work preaching to people, leading soul salvation, loving Jesus Christ. And then his wife and a few of his children went out at sea. And then uh, they said, bye, we're on a family vacation. And Spafford couldn't wait to see his family back. And he said, bye. And you can imagine Spafford was praying for his family. Lord, please give them traveling mercies. Yeah. Bring them home safely. Take care of my family. Yeah. May they enjoy themselves. But unfortunately, the Lord did the opposite. The boat sunk, and he lost his wife, mm. and not just one child, but mm. several of his children lost at sea, died, sunk in the ocean. Spafford was saddened, and with that emotion of sadness, the Holy Spirit spoke to his heart, and he started to write these words on a piece of paper. When peace like a river oh, wow. attendeth my way. And then you can imagine him sniffling when he wrote these words. 
When sorrows like sea billows roll. And you can imagine he lifting up his hand to Jesus Christ and writing, Whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well. child. I lost several of my children out at sea, and I meant every word, Lord, it's still well with my soul. And then, that, then his spirits lighted up, and you can imagine him singing and shouting when he wrote these words. My sin, oh the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the this? Oh, because we do this usually. Oh, we're singing It Is Well With My Soul again. Oh, here we go again. Yeah, here we go again, man. On, yeah, because here we go again. I will sing that till the day I die. Here yeah, we go right. again. Yeah. All is well with preach my soul. It, it. Come on. You, you know why? We, we might have to sing it over and over again because some of you are probably going through a complaint in your life, bitterness in uh -oh. your life, and think that God has been unfair to you, and you're going to have to tell God, you Two taught me to say, one. it is well with my soul. Two hands on that. And I'm going to have to say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh my soul. Amen. Wow. Now, do you know why we sing these songs? Yeah, yes, now, do we know why we sing these songs? You know, one thing I learned, brethren, is that this sermon is not just to uh, ordinary people. It's to Bible-believing Christians yes, who study so much of the Bible and think they know everything from dispensationalism all the way to every detail and verse. And it is so amazing that we can even forget the basics, yeah. the oh, basics wow. of what we sing every Sunday. Oh, wow. You under conviction yet? Oh, yeah. oh, good. Amen. Let your heart be established with grace. Amen. Woo, come on, Steve. Now, there was a person in Ireland named Joseph Scriven, graduated from college, engaged to a beautiful girl, successful. He was going to have it all, everything settled. Man, I'm going to have a good job now, I got a good degree, I'm going to marry a beautiful girl, and I'm going to have a beautiful family, this is great. And you know what happened? On the eve of their wedding day, on the very eve of their wedding day, his wife drowned, okay. soon to be married. You can imagine, she dressed up... In her wedding gown, and said, How? and then you know the room looking all beautiful, and then the fiance said, "I can't wait to show this to my husband. I can't wait to see show him how beautiful I am." And the soon-to-be husband looking forward to seeing how beautiful his wife would be. And at the very day, four drowned. Now what happened? Let's close the service. He had to tell all the relatives and family members and friends who were invited. My fiance drowned. Imagine telling that, man. To, to 50 to scores of your family. And are, My fiance drowned. We don't have a yeah, yeah, yeah. Overwhelmed with grief. And then what he decided to do is that he went to Canada and he decided to devote his life ministering to God's people. And what he did was that he helped many poor people as well, giving them clothes mm. and giving his own food to them. Yeah. Later on, his mother became ill and he had to take care of his grief-stricken sick and ill mother. And that man, who we don't know if he got married or not, just mm. lived with his mother all the rest of his life taking wow. care of her. Oh, now, wow. you imagine what depression, what sadness, oh, what heaviness he went through. So, what did he do? Well, he wrote this song. Oh, boy. He says, what a friend we have in oh, Jesus, gosh, us all, our sins and griefs to bear. What a 
privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Wow. Well, how did he live the rest of his life like that? Very simple. He realized that all of that needless burden he was carrying, he could have just dumped it to the Lord in prayer. Now, when's the last time you did that? Instead of, you know, whining and bickering Come about your on. problems, why can't you just you leave it at man. all your burdens at the feet of Jesus and trust in Him? Amen. When you get depressed and down, I'll, then you should sing this song. Come on, preacher. Well, what if I'm all alone? Well, do thy friends despise, forsake thee, take it to the Lord in prayer. Take and shield thee, thou will find a solace there. So, you know, uh, oh. while he had to take care of his mother, bear the bitterness and the grief of never having a family, oh. and a beautiful wife to marry, and taking care of all these poor people, and not being well known at all, oh, he realized that. I can still go on Amen. because yeah. I only need one friend That's right. to keep me going, That's and right. that is right. Jesus Amen. Christ. Come on, Bridget. Now, do you know why we sing that song? Wow. There was a person uh, who lo who was saved in Jesus Christ, but you know what? This is proof of it. Every saved Christian, it doesn't guarantee that he will live a great uh, spiritual life for Jesus Christ. They can backslide. They yeah. can become oh, carnal. Yeah. And this particular person. He wrote a song, beautiful song, but you know what? Even though he wrote a hymn for Jesus Christ, he himself even backslid and was not right with God. So he lost oh. the joy of his salvation. And then he wandered into the world and into sin. And he was like, I can't take it anymore. And he just gave up his Christian life and wandered away, backslid, gave up his life, even though he wrote a great hymn. And obviously, what's the result? Misery and guilt. Yeah. Yep. For every saved Christian yeah, who backslides. Misery and guilty, guiltiness. So you know what? He wanted to relieve his mind. He says, I just want to get away from it all. Let me travel around the world. Maybe that can get me going. So he started to travel around the world, get his joy back, you know, get some kind of relievement. In the course of his travels, he got acquainted with a young woman. And then this young woman, she had a hymn book. And she said, you know, uh, what do you think of this song? And she opened up the hymnal and showed it to the author. Wow. And then, uh, you know what the song he saw was? I'll tell you the song that he saw was. It was a song that he wrote. Oh no! Oh yeah. Are you and she me? said, what do you think of this song? Oh to grace how great a debtor dearly I'm constrained to be let thy goodness to a backslider like a fetter by my wandering heart to thee here's a flash prone to wander Lord I feel it and while she's singing ahead that backslider was getting on the conviction he said I wrote that word prone to wander Lord I feel it prone to leave the God I love here's my heart oh take and seal it seal it for thy courts above wow. and she asked him what do you think of that song he tried to avoid her question change the subject you know but she kept pressing him what do you think of this song what do you think of this song it's talking about a backslidden carnal Christian man yeah. man these words are really good man I think the songwriter meant every word that he wrote oh, yeah. And then he broke out crying and he said, I am the man who wrote that hymn many years ago. And he cried saying, I'd give anything to experience that joy with God again. The woman was shocked and that woman who was less spiritual than that man ministered to him, helped him get back on his feet. And then now what happened? Now he got back with God. He got back with God, got right with God. And then you know what? He meant every word in that song. Amen. He meant every word in that song. 
Now, do you know why we sing these songs? Yeah. Because when you get depressed and miserable in your backslidden sinful condition, uh-huh, uh -huh, because oh, yeah. you sinned against God again, uh -huh. because you're not right with God, and you've been backslidden for years, this is why we sing this song. Amen. Come on, preacher. Why? To lift up your spirit, right to out. encourage you, to motivate yeah. you back, to come back to God again. Why do you think we sing these songs? Wow, right. There was a man who lost his right eye from, uh, left eye, yeah, it was his, uh, well, either or, <laughs> he lost one of his eyes from cancer. He was suffering cancer and he lost one of his eyes. And then, as a result, he wouldn't be able to see with one of his eyes ever again. After that surgery, you can imagine that depression, that moment of trial and sorrow he was going through. And then he had to put a patch on his eye. And when he put his pat the patch on his eye, a bunch of these little kids who didn't know any better, they started to point their fingers at him and, and laugh and say, It's a pirate, Mom! It's the pirate! It's a pirate! And then they, called, and then they nicknamed him Patch the Pirate. Oh, goodness. <laughs> And then that man, his name is Ron Hamilton. And Ron Hamilton realized that this could be a ministry. Amen. And he took that name, Patch the Pirate, and to this day he's still alive, writing hymns, writing songs for Jesus Christ. Why? Because of that one depressing incident wow. where he lost one of his eyes. During that incident, when he lost his eye, questioning whatever God does, I don't understand what God does, he wrote this song which is in some of the hymn books and our Korean hymn book today. God never moves without purpose or plan when trying His servant and molding a man. Give thanks to the Lord, though your testing seems long in darkness. Darkness, right? Lost his eye. He giveth us a song, oh, rejoice in the Lord. He makes no mistakes, he knoweth the end of oh, each path that I take. For when I am tried and purified, like this? Yeah. Wow. I shall come forth <laughs> as gold. Right. Now do you know why we sing Amen. these songs? Why? Because when we go through depressing situations in life, we've got something to sing about. Yeah. Not and blue, blue, blue. Come on, it's because blue. what you got what? Amen. How many? How many? How many right here? How many? Oh. How many to lift up your spirit? Oh, how many? Uh, over five hundred. And not counting this with the tons of other hymn books out there. Literally, there are thousands, right. there are thousands yeah. of songs only about Jesus Christ. Why? Because He is God. Because Jesus is God. God is worthy of all the praise. Amen. That's Amen. why we sing over a thousand songs, on, and I sure. hope you meant every word yes, when you sir. sing that. Amen. Whew, good stuff. My last point, because of deification. Deification. Go to Revelation 5, please. Revelation 5. Revelation 5. Because of deification. This is my favorite. I don't know about you, but my favorite is because I want to deify him. I want to make him worthy. Yeah. Jesus is God. Yeah. And because he is God, he is worthy. That's the most important reason why I sing praise to him. You know why? Because he's worthy of it. He created me. He created you. And he deserves every word of compliment from me. Yeah. And he deserves praise. Oh, God is full of himself saying, praise me, praise me. Yeah, you know why? He deserves it. Amen. He created you, uh -huh. you little pencil you That's that right. God come could on, have just snapped on, many, many millennia ago. Right. Yep. He didn't even have to die for you. Nope. He became more worthless than a pencil for you to take up all your sin. So, yeah, I believe he's more than worthy. Amen. Come on, preacher. Oh, God is full of himself. Yeah, he deserves it. Yeah, yeah. He, he needs Preach. to be more than come full on, of praise. Preacher. He needs to be more than full of praise. Preach. He needs to overflow himself with praise. 
Yeah, I can understand why these cherubims have to keep singing every single time. Holy, holy, holy. Every single time for eternity. You know why? He deserves Amen. it. That's right. That's right. Hey, man. And so these atheists Amen. and liberals Amen. will Amen. never understand that. Oh, how can a guy say, compliment me, compliment me? They'll never oh, understand God. that. Yep. You know why? Because they're sinful human flesh. Oh, yeah. Whereas God is holy and 100% pure and righteous. That's why they can't understand that. Mm. Of course when I compliment a certain person, holy, 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 praise, 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 and all that, that we would think each other, you're full of yourself. But God is not that. He is not simple Amen. human flesh. No. He is absolutely perfect. Amen. So he deserves every word of it. Right. Yes, glory. Amen. amen, amen, amen. Go to Revelation 5, verse 8. 5, verse 8. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders amen. fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests. Wow, and we right. shall reign oh, on oh. the earth. Whether you like it or not, you can be dead. You can be a deadbeat singer right now. But trust me, once Revelation five hits, you're gonna have to sing, and you're gonna have to point your finger at Jesus Christ, Amen. bow down to him, and say, "Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy." Amen. You Amen. will sing it whether you like it or not. That's right. You know why? Because he is awesome. Amen. Now, do you know why we sing this in the morning Man. before preaching? Because before we even deserve to hear a word from him, we should praise him glorify Him before we even deserve to hear a word from Him yeah, in the preaching. Right. Amen. This is why we should sing before this the preaching. This is good preaching today, man. You know, there was a Reverend Carl Boberg, and he lived on the southeast coast of Sweden. And one time there was a heavy rainstorm storm hitting, and he had to walk to a church meeting two miles away. <laughs> and two miles away, he had to go through that rainstorm, and all that mess, and then his feet getting all muddy, you know, in the dirt. But instead of complaining and whining about the rainstorm, he, he was actually in awe. And he glorified God and said, man, Lord, and he heard the thunder crashing and the rain pouring. And he said, Lord, what an awesome God you are. Amen. What a mighty, powerful God you are. And that's why he wrote this song while he was wow. singing in the rain. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. And that thunder crashed, right? Wow. And he said, Thy power through display and when the rain poured and the thunder crashed he lifted up his soul then sings my soul my savior god to thee You know why I sing? And you know why we sing? Because he deserves it. That's right. It. Amen. That's right. Amen. To him be the glory. Amen. We should deify him. That's the most important reason why I praise him. Why? I don't have to be told why. He just deserves it. Come on, preacher. That's right. Come on. Now, there was a large religious service conducted here in this area. A large religious service at the Golden Gate Exposition in San Francisco. 
And then, yeah, you, all these liberals and ecumenicals and compromisers <laughs> were there. And the minister started to give the address to all these liberals and homosexuals in San Francisco. And he spoke against the power of the blood of Jesus oh Christ. He did not deify Jesus Christ oh as God, but no. low-rated him and said, there is no power in that blood. And, you know, uh, Jesus is not God, and uh, he was only a man, and uh, he was a great teacher, and then stuff like that. And then when he started to say stuff like that at the liberal San Francisco area, he finished, when he finished, in a great, powerful, outspoken voice, he sat down. And then it was quiet. Finally, there was a weak old lady that stood up like this. What? A weak, timid lady. She was fearful because she was in front of many big shots there. But she couldn't take it anymore. Hey, man. They put well, down her God that day, yeah. and she was going to deify God. And she got up. They ain't going to disgrace the blood of my God. Come on, hey, come man. on. She got up and she sang... There is a fountain yeah, filled yeah. with blood drawn from yeah. Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunge beneath that blood, lose all their guilty stains. Yeah. And all these finally weak-hearted Christians yeah. start to stand up yeah. with that old woman, and they start to sing, lose all their guilty Sinners plot beneath that wow. flood, lose all their guilty stains. And that pastor was embarrassed that oh, yeah. day. Been, that's right. Praise yeah. the Lord for that. Yeah. Because he embarrassed God that day, wow. speaking for hours on a stupid little pulpit. Yeah. When that old lady, she had no pulpit, she had nothing on, and just that's lifted right. up her voice Amen. saying, that's Glory be to God. God. That's right. That old lady. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, it is a tradition, some of you may have heard this before, if you went to opera houses, when they sang the Hallelujah Chorus, it was a tradition to stand up when the Hallelujah Chorus was going, Hallelujah. Do you know why? I'll tell you why. There was a story behind it. George Frederick Handel, he was a famous musician, but because he could criticize against the Prince of Wales and his fellow noblemen, he started to get critiqued, attacked, and then pressured, and then finally they were the, his enemies, because they were rich and powerful, and they plotted things against him, they successfully closed his theater. Oh, no. So, he, unfortunately, he could never, ever sing and play music again. Wow. So, he, his right side got paralyzed, his money was all gone, and creditors started to threaten to imprison him. Wow. And during that dark moment, there was a man who just randomly visited him. And Handel was like, oh, I don't want to meet this guy. Yeah. But then the man said, I have an oratorio, and I want you to write it. And Handel's like, I'm injured, I'm out, I can't do it again. And then the man said, but the title is The Messiah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And Handel, like a blink of light, he says, Messiah, about our Lord and Savior who died on the cross. And he said, yes. And he took that. And he says, all right, I'll write it. Amen. That whole piece of the Messiah, which, con which contains lots and lots of music, he finished it in three weeks. Three? Three weeks. And he drank only milk, drank only milk, just to complete that. Wow. You know why? He said, I'm going to write this for God. Amen. Because he's worthy. Amen. You know what happened? The king of England, the king of England, the big shot himself, said, I want to hear your peace. And the big king of England went down to hear the hallelujah chorus. And then because the king of England was there, Handel's enemies, the Prince of Wales and noblemen, they had to come too because the king of England was there. So everyone was there and now they were forced to hear and play. And God was going to get glory that day. Oh yeah. When, you know what they started to play? Those big... Those big drums went like boom, and they went hallelujah, and the cymbals went bam, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. This is for you, God, Handel wrote, for the Lord God omnipotent. 
that reign. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, wow. hallelujah, hallelujah. And then when he came to that finale, they went, King of kings and Lord of lords. Wow. And the king of England couldn't take it anymore. Yeah. And he said, you know what? He deserves the glory. And he got up from his seat and stood up to give glory wow. to the king and the right. creator of the universe. Right. Amen. And because That's the king right. of England stood up, all of the people said, well, if he's standing up, I have to stand up. So wow. they all stood up. Oh, oh, and then Handel's enemies, oh, no. the Prince of Wales, they said, well, we got to stand up oh, too. Yeah. And they stood up. Oh, Why? Lord, Both Lord, the, Lord, his God. enemies, every the knee. common people, yeah. and the king himself, every knee bowed at the yeah. name of yeah. Jesus Christ Lord, because he Lord, is worthy. King. And he went, King of kings yeah. and Lord of Lord, King of kings yeah. and Lord, Lord of yeah. Lord. Yeah. Lord. And he shall reign, wow. shall reign forever and ever. Oh, King of kings and Lord oh, of lords. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. He came the big drums. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. That's they all get glory to God that day. That's right. You know why? Because he's worthy. Amen. Glory. That's why. Man. That's not my final illustration. Here's my final story. <laughs> there was a man named D.R. Van Sickle. D.R. Van Sickle was sick and tired because only the crypt see atheists can't write songs. No, no. No. Why, what can they sing and shout about? <laughs> they, have they have no God. That's so right. D.R. Van Sickle was sick of that, that Christians were writing all the good music. And he says, well, you know what? I'm going to prove the Christians wrong. I I'm going to show them that a lost person like me can write a hymn. So this lost atheist, this lost person, who wasn't even a saved Christian, wrote a hymn. And after he wrote that hymn, it was about giving glory to God, King Emmanuel, all hail to him. And after he wrote that song, he says, see, I proved them wrong, and all the Christians were enlightened. They said, man, this is a great song, this is great music. And Van Sickle was like, yeah, I showed you, man, a lost person can write a hymn too. And then these bunch of Christians took his music, and D.R. Van Sickle was sitting in front of them with all the people, and he said, okay, let's see how my piece sounds. Uh -huh. And when they were singing this song, uh -huh. the Holy Spirit began to yes, move on his heart. <laughs> and then when the Holy Spirit began to move on his heart, he was getting under conviction. Wow. He went, all hail to thee, Emmanuel, our risen wow. king and savior. Are you kidding me? Thy foes are vanquished, are and thou art omnipotent forever. Man, you can't sit down after this. Death, sin, and hell no longer oh, no. reign, and Satan's power is bursting wow. away. You know what happened? Satan's power was burst in twain in Van Sickle's heart. Wow, he couldn't true. take it anymore. The chains broke. That's he true. became a saved Christian yeah. after hearing that song. And he received Christ for his salvation. Wow. Wow. That chorus, it goes, Man. All hail, all hail, all hail, all hail, Emmanuel. So well, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Hail to the King, we love so well, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Glory and honor and majesty, wisdom, power be unto thee now and never more. Hail to the King, we love so well, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Hail to the King, we love so well, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Amen. King of kings and Lord of lords, all hail Emmanuel. And he wrote a finale. Amen. Amen. Beautiful, man. Amen. Do you know why? We sing these now Amen. because wow. you don't need to be told why. Nope. He just deserves it. That's right. Wow.